Welcome to the Full Circle Podcast, Finding Your Way Home. I'm your host, Jillian McMichael, and I am looking forward to taking you on a journey of self-discovery as we explore insightful and inspirational topics that will help you find your way home back to your authentic self. In today's episode, we're talking about honoring your truth and how you can live your life on your terms. So settle in and enjoy the conversation. Being true to myself is a term that is branded around freely. But do you truly know what it means to you and how you can live your life being true? As we know from our previous conversation in episode one, we play roles and attach ourselves to labels. But when we strip these away and we figure out who we really are, we don't often know what to do with that information. Never mind figuring out what our next step is. And so this is what today's episode is all about, helping you take your next step to coming home back to your true self. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to tell you right now that being true to yourself, honouring your truth and living your life on your terms is not selfish. It is not arrogant or egotistical. It is life supporting and a huge part of your emotional and mental self-care. Being true to yourself starts with knowing who you are and accepting yourself fully. It's important that you can articulate what your truth is, what defines you, what makes you whole. Being true to yourself is a personal choice and one that revolves around making decisions on how you want to live your life who you want in your life and what and how you want to be spending your time. We all have the power to live our lives in this way, which is meaningful and true to us. But sometimes when you start to embark on a journey to understand your true self, what that means to you, fear can creep in. And when fear is present, we can put roadblocks in our way. These roadblocks manifest in different guises. They can be little white lies that you tell yourself or others, such as how are you and and you say I'm good and fine when you're really not that good. When you get asked if you want to go out for a drink tonight and you say I can't, I've got to work late and you're actually sat at home with your pajamas on. Or even if you say, yeah, sure, let's go for it. It sounds like a fantastic night when you really don't want to go. Or they can be ingrained beliefs that make it difficult to appreciate you have a choice. Now, most humans, if not all, have at least one ingrained belief that makes it difficult to move beyond the constraints of our mind. Mine was, I'm not good enough. It may be helpful for you to reflect upon yours as we go through our conversation. So I was teaching about being true to yourself on one of my coach training programs and a student challenged me on the topic. How can you be true to yourself when you're in a relationship, you have a family and you have responsibilities? You can't just go off and do whatever you want. After understanding who I was, I needed to figure out how I could live my life being true to me. But I was caught up in my negative self-talk. Would I let people down? Would people like me if I speak up? I was stuck in limbo between lack of self-belief, not being good enough, to what will people think of me? If I voice my opinion genuinely, what will people think of me? So being true to ourselves can feel like a big task. We're too busy, we don't have the time, and this can become our excuse. But if you really want to live your life in your truth, then you must take a chance and be bold, even if you're frightened of failing. The student was right. In the real world, none of us can walk away from our responsibilities. But I realise that you do have a choice about being truthful in how you feel about those responsibilities and how you want to live within them. If you deny how you feel, You are ignoring your basic need to be yourself. You're blocking your human right to self-expression. Now, most of us sacrifice our need to be true to ourselves because we're conditioned to think in a particular way and behave in a particular way. 
This is our narrative, it's our story, that self-belief tape that plays in your mind over and over again. So what stops us from being our true self? People pleasing. It is the biggest factor in stopping us from being our true self. The need to fit in, be part of something, follow the crowd, be accepted by others, all lead to us forgetting about who we really are. And instead, we dilute our personality and you immediately limit your potential. This moves us further away from finding true happiness and fulfillment. In fact, it brings you nothing but inner conflict. Now, inner conflict is one of the biggest struggles we face. It can be a lifelong battle that messes with your mind, your emotions, and it stops you from accomplishing anything you desire. Inner conflict resides in your mind and your mind will give you opposing motivations based upon conflicting beliefs, needs and wants. Now these arise and create dilemmas and these dilemmas create turmoil within. Should I? Shouldn't I? Yes? No? Is it good? Is it bad? I will? I won't? Our mind has a way of dominating us and in these moments of conflicts and confusion we lack equanimity meaning we don't have balance between the head and the heart. Your heart says one thing, I want to be true to myself, and your mind says something else. You can't change your career at 40 because you're too old. I'd been telling myself all sorts of lies, contradictions, incongruent statements, and some of these were were really there to protect myself because I knew it was easier. It was easier to pretend rather than be honest with how I really felt. In 2010, when my life was turned upside down, I lost nearly everything. My business, my marriage, my home, my car. And I was left with a few suitcases, my lovely six-year-old son's hand, and a debt of £97,000 to pay back. Fear crept in. Silent assassin, ready to call its target, me, when I wasn't looking. I found it difficult being honest with myself. I was masking my vulnerability and how exposed I really felt and how scared I was of failing again. I was in constant conflict with my mind and my mind played tricks on me. I wanted to be true to myself, but I had no idea how to go about it. My confusion within brought lack of clarity and I just couldn't get the balance right between what my heart longed for and what my head told me. So I did what I knew best. I asked myself a series of questions, and I tried to figure it out that way. I asked myself, what would being true to myself mean? It would mean I could express myself and be clear about my needs and wants. My desires, my aspirations, and my feelings could be shared. I would not feel the need to hide them or suppress them any longer. If I was true to myself, I could live my purpose, really show up and be present in my life. And if I was true to myself, I would be able to let go of my own judgments, the assumptions I was masking and making about myself and others. If I were true to myself, I was afraid. I was afraid that I wouldn't become the person I could be, and I would continue to be an outsider and not brave enough to honour myself in the way I wanted. But I knew deep down that if I was true to myself, I could be free. I could free myself and I would find peace within. I knew that being true to myself was not selfish. It was self-care and more than anything else, I needed to care for myself. How could I be good with others if I couldn't be good with myself? And I knew if I were to speak my truth, I could embrace the whole of me. And I knew deep down that being true, speaking my truth would genuinely change my life. I hoped that my fear, anxiety and worry would dissolve. And I was determined to find out if that would happen. Now, emotional self-care is a must. Like me, you too will need to understand your root cause of your conflict. And one of the ways to do this is by becoming more aware of what you're saying and what you're communicating with others. 
I hadn't realised that until I started unpacking all of this, I'd been one of those people who answered a question with a question. Silly things such as, what do you want for your dinner? And I'd say, what do you want? What movie do you want to go and see? And I'd say, well, what movie do you want to see? And when my boss asked me at work, what did I think about the project? I said, what do you think about the project? The answer was always a question. This was a habit I'd formed and this is how I lived my life. If this is familiar to you and you're, you too answer questions with a question, I want you to try and stop doing that. Remember, you have a choice. You always have a choice. And when you lean into the power of choice, you will feel empowered, liberated, and you will quickly realize you have options. Remember, like building that muscle, you need to keep training and working on building that strength so that when you do test out your power of choice, Yes, it might feel strained to begin with, but over time, it will start to feel more comfortable. I started to build my strength in this new muscle. And over time, I started to make choices that were true to me. I tested it out at home and I tested it out at work. It felt forced absolutely to begin with. But after a while, you know, it started to feel okay. So while we're building this muscle, it's important to remember that those around you, your family, your friends, your co-workers, won't be used to your voice and hearing you say what you want. So you might get some resistance from others. And this is absolutely normal because they'll be used to the old you, not the true you. So they're going to find it difficult, but that does not mean you succumb back to old ways. All it means is that you remain steady, and you'd be kind and compassionate to yourself, but also to them. If you want those people in your life, then you need to take them on this journey with you. So you're going to need to talk to them and let them share and for you to share with them what's actually going on for yourself. You also need to tell them what you need from them. Now, this is a great test to speak your truth and ask for the support that you need. But how do you get to live your life on these terms? So my perspective is that there are three ways you can do this. One, understand your truth. Two, speak your truth. And three, live your truth. And I just want to remind you that this, again, is not selfish or arrogant. This is life supporting. So all I'm suggesting here is that you speak your truth and live your life on those terms. Why? Because if you don't, you're going to go back to playing those roles and wearing those labels. And nobody wants to look back on their life and say, if only I would have done, if only I should have said. You can make the changes today, right here and now, if you want to. So as we start to bring our conversation to a close, I'm going to pose you four questions that I would love you to answer. These questions will be in the show notes, so you can refer back to them if you need to. But if you can, just take out your notebook and write your answers. And then I want you to read your answers out loud. You don't need to say them to anyone else, just yourself. But you do need to read them out loud. So here are the four questions. Okay, are you ready? Being true to myself would mean. Second question is, is if I am true to myself, I could. The third question is, if I were true to myself, I would let go of. And the fourth question is, how would being true to myself change my life? By answering these questions and then saying them out loud, you've already done steps one and two. You've understood your truth and you have spoken your truth. All you need to do now is step three, which is live your truth. So I'm going to invite you to check in with yourself every day and ask, have I been true to myself today? And if you have been true to yourself, then you should acknowledge it and celebrate yourself for that. But if you haven't, for whatever reason, don't worry about it. Don't judge yourself or throw the towel in. All you need to do is just go back to your answers you wrote down and read them out aloud again and again and again.
and make sure those answers resonate. Check in with yourself and make sure what you have written down is your truth and practice and practice it. Being true to yourself is a commitment. Like most things, you have to work at it every day and make sure you're honoring yourself and your own truth. You need to listen to your truth and you have to have the courage to speak it out loud. So why don't you make a promise right here, right now? Make a promise that you are going to do the work you need to do. This is the next step to you coming back home to your true self. If I can do this, I know you can too. I want to thank you for joining me today. I've loved having this conversation with you. See you next time when we're going to be talking about how to fully let go so you can create space for something new. Stay well and see you soon.